Welcome to the episode. Today, we're celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Myopia Podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Greetings, friends. It is so great to have you here and be able to uh, share with you the celebration of the one-year anniversary of the Myopia podcast launching. Uh, we launched it last July 13th, I believe was the first date that we uh, we published, July 13th, 2021. And here we are, July uh, 2022, uh, excited to be able to share with you where we've come over the, uh, the last year. Um, somewhere around 40, 42 episodes uh, have been uh, pushed out for the Myopia podcast, and um, we've had some incredible guests. I'm going to go through the entire lineup as the topics that we covered and uh, share that with you. But um, the response has been overwhelming. I, uh, I have to say that when I started the podcast, I, I, I really... I really started it more more for me um, because I wanted to learn more about myopia. <laughs> And just my quest for knowledge um, drove me to uh, to do this. I thought maybe if I started a podcast, I could convince some of my friends to talk with me for a half hour. And some of the people that I really looked up to, uh, that I could convince them that uh, maybe I was worth talking to because I had a podcast and I was going to share all that information. And uh, it's made me an inc- like a, so much better of a doctor and uh, sharing things. It's shifted how we've practiced optometry um, and myopia management in my own practice. And it's expanded my view of myopia even beyond where I was a year ago. I've been doing myopia management for 15 years. And uh, I remember the day that myopia management became something of, uh, of an objective for the rest of my life. I remember where I was sitting. In fact, I went over that discussion in one of our first podcasts with uh, Patrick Caroline and talked with him a little bit about that. And uh, I just am excited to report how well we are doing. And um, although we're in a niche, you know, not everybody in uh, in the world wants to hear about myopia. I don't understand why. Not everybody in optometry and ophthalmology and uh, in in the ophthalmology space care to hear about myopia. Um, so you know, we, we we don't have like you know hundreds of thousands of viewers. Uh, and listeners, but it 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 certainly has been overwhelming the number of people who have uh, who have joined us and been listening. I lecture all across the the country. I'm not back to the world yet with COVID, but um, as I go throughout the country, it's, it's surprising how many people come up to me and, and share you know something that they learned during one of the podcast episodes, and I just brings a huge smile to my heart and uh, you know I get pretty excited to hear about that. So I uh, thought I would just share with you how awesome that is and uh, you know what we've learned. When we originally launched the Myopia podcast, if you weren't aware of this, we launched it on a platform um, combined with the other podcast that I do called the OI Show or the Optometric Insights Show. And we launched it under an umbrella called OI Media, and um, it was all within one podcast podcast platform. And then several months uh, ago, about six months into it, we broke it into its own podcast. So it was relaunched on a uh, on a, a new channel all of its own. We went back and relaunched all of the episodes. And as many of you have seen, we've been uh, putting out the video content on YouTube as well. And so you may be listening to this on YouTube or on a, on, on a Spotify or Apple Podcasts or various different platforms, but just know the medium is available. We do a video uh, of all of these as well, and they're published on uh, Dave Kading's um, uh, YouTube page. So if that's something you want to see the guest talking, not often do they show um, show things because they know it's a podcast, but every once in a while, they do have some graphics that they bring up. So uh, that's, that's where we sit today. Um, let me just go through real quick some of the episodes and give you some of my, um, my, my takeaways from them. I'm going to work to keep this brief because I've learned so much from each of these episodes, but just to give you a little bit of snippet of what we learned. So the first one was just an introduction to what the podcast is going to be about. 
And then the second episode was where we talked with Patrick Caroline about the history of myopia management and uh, got some great feedbacks. You know, I've, I've, I've been a, um, a, a mentee of Patrick Caroline for a long time, but every time I talk to him, he teaches me something and just learning about that. Number three, we talked with Jeff Walleen about the history, uh, excuse me, about why atropine matters and uh, what we can learn about atropine. Um, number four is the uh, the infamous Mark Bullimore of uh, is myopia a disease and why each diopter matters. If you haven't heard why each diopter matters, it will revolutionize the concept around why you do myopia management and why you don't let uh, any diopters go to waste. The fifth was Dwight Ackerman, who is many of you know, is the editor of review of myopia management, a fantastic publication. And he spoke about the business models of myopia management. We brought him back later and, uh, and had him on another podcast. So you'll hear that in just a, a moment, Randy Kojima on topographies, um, to enhance your myopia management effects and success. So what do you look for when you're doing orthokeratology to make yourself more successful? Number seven was a joint, and this was our first joint with Elise Kramer and Stephanie Wu, two amazing practitioners that I hold in high regards, and uh, how to create, um, the, 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 how to market your myopia management practice, which is some really good things. Then we had Maria Liu and how do they do myopia management in China? Um, everybody thinks about myopia management in China as this this thing, and I think some of those myths will be dispelled by some of the things that Maria uh, shared. She's fantastic. Dr. Afe Vanderwerd of how to create a customized approach to your myopia management. Um, Afe being in the Netherlands has this international perspective that I super appreciate. Implementing myopia management in practice, which, is, which was a special webinar, and that was about a 50-minute conversation. And that was coined um, with uh, some support that we had from Euclid which was uh, the only sponsor or supporter that we've had of the podcast so far that we've sought out. And then Justin Kwan, who as many of you know, is a private practitioner, but now works with Cooper Vision. So his episode was from private practice to Cooper Vision's myopia guru. Um, number 12, the myopia podcast, we had Matt Ording, three principles to grow your myopia practice uh, GMAC and Treehouse Eyes. Matt Ording is the uh, co-founder of Treehouse Eyes. So what are they doing in the myopia management space? And, uh, you know, he's really helped to grow that space a lot. And then GMAC um, is the group who is all of the companies coming together to help bring about awareness around myopia management. Monica Young, before she left uh, the International Myopia Institute, joined me for an episode of 400 Definitions for Myopia and uh, what the IMI is all about. Uh, she is now with uh, J&J. &J. Craig Norman talking about the lawsuits in myopia and uh, how it's uh, progressed in the world of ophthalmology and where we're going to be three years from now. And then uh, Ron Lamb, who you may not know, but is an incredible inventor in the eye care space about using eye tracking for axial length measurements in myopia glasses, some incredible ideas on the way. Then we uh, revisited uh, Monica Young and innovation and, and the research that is coming out. Like, what are some things in the future for myopia management? We had Jeff Walleen back and our higher ad powers better with soft multifocals. Uh, there's been some studies on that. And so I had Jeff share with us again, we had AFE and preventing myopia before it starts that pre myopia. Like, what can we do before it starts and how do we intervene? My conversations with kids and parents about myopia management, which is a conversation that I had about how do I discuss myopia with our, our, our uh, patients, where uh, to find myopia management education with Craig Norman, who has been the guru of uh, specialty contact lens education, challenges of topographies and its benefit in orthokeratology, like what, and that was with Maria, and she's pu uh, published some data on what topography data do you use and what does it really tell us? Us. Had the wonderful Dr. Ariel Sorenzi setting prices in myopia management. Um, that's a challenging one. A lot of people struggle with how do we get the financial discussions. Dr. Oliver Wu, who is out of Australia, spoke about how to set up, set yourself up um, as a myopia manager. Like, how do you make yourself 
different? Like, what does that look like? And then, um, as I mentioned, Dwight Ackerman came, came back and spoke about treating myopia holistically. Um, Randy was back using topography to predict the myopia management success. Like, are we able to look at the topography and say, okay, we're going to have better myopia management outcomes as a result of this. And, um, and then Joe Rapone, who is the guru of all spectacle lenses for myopia management, came and spoke on episode 26, episode 27, other factors affecting myopia, which is a podcast that I did. And then uh, Oliver Wu, again, growing an explosive myopia management practice. Uh, and Cheryl Chapman, who is somebody you uh, that is an incredible influencer in the myopia space, spoke about the economics of myopia management and setting your pricing with some different strategies, some things I hadn't really ever thought of. We have this global fee, but what about subscription models? How does that all fit in? How do, uh, how do you maybe do a, uh, an a la carte method? Dr. Catherine Richdale from the University of Houston, Houston, talking about astigmatism in myopia management and higher order aberrations affecting it. And uh, incidentally, that is one of our top listened to podcasts. Uh, she and Joe Rapone are uh, right up there as uh, as the most listened to podcast that we've had. Uh, Dr. Andrew Nurkirk, uh, Nurkirk, he, he, he's this practitioner in Chicago and he is, uh, b- I believe the number one, my site prescriber in the United States and his practice exploded in myopia management over the last couple of years. And I just wanted to know why and what he did. So he spoke with us on episode 31, um, presenting treatment options to parents um, was episode 32 that I did. And I had Dwight Barnes on and developing a myopia coordinator. He has somebody specific in his practice that does all of the myopia management discussions. And so he spoke with us uh, a bit about that and an incredible discussion we had with uh, with Dwight. Um, Three-year data from the LAMP study, that was an atropine study um, in your patients. Uh, that was a, a review of the literature. And Dr. Sheila Morrison, who was an intern of mine way back, and just to see how that that young lady has just uh, made an incredible name for herself in the eye care space. I love what she is doing. And I love talking to her about how do we talk to pediatricians and teachers and other ophthalmologists about myopia management to grow our practice. I had uh, Joe Brady on. Joe is an optometrist who worked in uh, academia and then he went into, into well, he worked in practice and then he was in academia and growing practices. And then he ran Zeiss and then Tier Science. And now he is uh, running a company called Eureka, which owns Euclid. And we talked about the future of myopia. Joe is a, a, a mentor of mine, somebody I super look up to and just is one of the most brilliant minds. So I loved having Joe on for episode number 36. Uh, Moshe Mendelssohn, how to bring myopia to the forefront of your practice. Uh, Moshe has, he, he's, he set the side of his practice apart where he has this wing of his practice specifically set aside for myopia management. Really cool to see. Tan Mai came in for episode uh, 38 and best practices in growing your myopia practice. Uh, so that that was a really cool episode talking about things like having tickets in the office and having um, you know various different uh, prizes and so forth. And then at the time of this recording, we haven't launched the other episodes, but one of them will be Paul Chamberlain talking about the six-year data on my site. Uh, we had Selena Chan and Natalie Chai talking about um, some incredible things with regards to uh, to myopia management and how we really should be thinking about the future and you know f- future things to 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 be worried about with our patients. Um, so uh, we 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 have a lot of incredible data. Tim Early, uh, Brianna Rue, um, uh, Philip Chang. Th- these are all episodes that are on on their way to you. I, I've recorded them, but. I, I'm just really, really stoked to be able to share them with you. Thank you for coming along. 
with me in this journey on the myopia podcast uh you know i don't as you may uh guess this is a, a lot of work and uh but it is so much fun and you know i uh, i hope if you continue to share with me on social media, if you continue to share with me ideas and things that you want to hear, I think we can keep going for you know another year, maybe two years. We'll see. Um, but I'm just having a blast learning, and that's why I really wanted to set this podcast up. We've got some great ideas that are coming in the future. I'll hopefully be able to share them with you in the next couple of months of, uh, of, of some additional resources that we may have available and additional partnerships. And uh, uh, just I wanted to thank you and revisit with you where we are with one year of uh, incredible data. Happy birthday to the Myopia podcast. And uh, thank you to all the people who have uh, supported and, and, you know, helped share the information, um, who have subscribed and listened to prior podcasts. I was, uh, giving a lecture recently at a meeting and somebody said, I, I hadn't heard of your podcast and, you know, had a five hour drive. And so they were, you know, go, go back and listen to all of it. And those are, those are, that's the reason why we do this, right? If there's a way that we can make a practitioner more impactful for their patients so that we can reduce the progression of this, this devastating disease that can be stopped. Uh, what an incredible opportunity. So hopefully you've enjoyed some of these episodes half as much as I've enjoyed listening and learning. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Myopia podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.